So like I was saying, we need to understand that as children of God, we have one altar that I will call your personal altar. And your personal altar is, is what I can refer to as your heart. It's what I can refer to as your spirit. Because the Bible says, remember in the book of uh, Corinthians, that our body is the temple of the Lord. And I told you that anytime people go to a temple is because inside the temple there is an altar and they go in the temple to worship or to have communion with a spiritual entity. So if the Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, it also means that there is an altar in us. And it's clear that we are an altar. We are an altar because you are a spirit living in the body. And when you give your life to Christ, when you become born again, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord comes into your life and dwell in your own spirit. And at that time, your own spirit becomes a carrier or a container or a an habitation for the presence of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And we saw in the Old Testament that the presence of God was dwelling in the midst of the people of Israel inside the Ark of the Lord. So the Ark of the Lord was a carrier of the presence of God and it was the altar of the children of God. So as a born again, because you are born again of the spirit, so your spirit now becomes an altar, a holy altar, an altar of God. And this is why the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost comes into your life and dwell in your own spirit so you are an altar and this is why i call your personal altar is your heart or your spirit and in the bible when in the book of matthew chapter 16 verse 24 remember what jesus christ said jesus christ said if anyone wants to come to me let him first deny himself and then take up his cross and follow me. So you see what Jesus said? He said, if anyone wants to come to me, let him first deny himself. Secondly, let him take up his cross and follow me. So we are called to deny ourselves and to take up our cross and to follow Jesus. And what is that cross? What is the meaning of the cross? We as believers, we are to take up to follow Jesus. That cross is what I call your altar. It's your altar. It's your personal altar. It's your heart. Because you cannot follow Jesus without your heart. You cannot follow God without your heart. You cannot come to God without your heart. You need the only way someone can come to God is through his heart. And this is what Jesus said. You got to carry your own heart and follow me if you want to come to me. Because if you don't carry your own heart, if you don't carry your own spirit, you will never be able to come to me. You will never be able to follow me. And we know that Jesus Christ also died on the cross. And that cross was an altar where he sacrificed his life for the salvation of humanity. 
So you are an altar. Your heart is an altar of God. This is why when God wants to talk to his child, when God wants to talk to his children, he would come into their heart to communicate with them. When God wants to convict you of something, he will do it in your heart through the Holy Spirit. Anything that God does with his children, he goes through the spirit or the heart. Why? Because it's, it's, it's the altar, is the platform that gives the legal right to God, who is a spirit, to come in contact with the physical world. Because the, no spirit has the legal right to come into the physical world unless he's given permission or legality through an altar. So your heart is that platform, is that altar that gives the legal right to God to come into your life, to intervene into your life, to intervene into your situation, to touch you, to change you, to lead you, to control you, to guide you. So your heart is that door. We can see in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. To verse 2. What does the Bible say? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the Bible says that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy. Present our body to who? To God. So since our life is an altar, we are called to sacrifice. And one thing, one reason why the prayers of Christians are powerless. One reason why the church is powerless today is because the church has neglected the importance of sacrifice. The church does not talk anymore about sacrifice. They only talk about the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. They only talk about the blood of Jesus. But they don't talk anymore about personal sacrifice. They don't talk anymore about the cross that every believer must take up before following Jesus. We are telling people, how to come to Jesus, to follow Jesus, what Jesus can, can do for them. But we don't tell people the secret, the secret or the requirement for anyone who wants to follow Jesus. We forget, we neglect, we, we are sometimes even ignorant of the fact that we must teach people to deny themselves and to take up the cross and to follow Jesus. And when the Bible says that we must present our bodies a living sacrifice, we must sacrifice. We must sacrifice. All those we know about in the Bible is because of the sacrifice they have offered to God. It's because of the way they sacrifice their life. The only way, the only reason we remember a lot of people is because of the sacrifice. It's not because only of the prayer life or the miraculous or the gift. It was because of how they sacrificed their life for Christ, for the kingdom of God. We know Abraham because of the sacrifice of Isaac.
We know Solomon because of the sacrifice that made the glory of God fall in the temple. So because of the sacrifice, people until today are remembered. And when Jesus said, when the Bible says that we must deny ourselves, sometime you must give up what you have the right to for the kingdom of God. That is what it means to deny yourself. It's to give up what you have the right to for the kingdom of God. As children of God, we must sacrifice our time for God. We must sacrifice our time to work for the kingdom of God. We must sacrifice our time to be available at church. We must sacrifice our time to do something that would contribute to the advancement of the kingdom of God. We must sacrifice our finances. We must sacrifice our goods. We must sacrifice our possession, our materials. We must sacrifice even when we are, we, we, we are offended. And we have the right to complain. Sometimes we must keep quiet as a sacrifice. We must forgive as a sacrifice. When you forgive, it's also a sacrifice. People have done wrong to you, but you decide to forgive them. It's a sacrifice. People insult you, but you decide not to, re to react or not to respond or not to answer. It's a sacrifice. People talk on your back, but you decide not to do the same. It's a sacrifice. People hurt you, but you decide not to do the same. It's a sacrifice. Living a life of holiness, it's a sacrifice. You deny yourself the pleasure of your flesh. You decide not to be carnally minded. You decide to, to, to say no to your passions, to say no to your desires so that you may be in conformity with the will of God. That is the sacrifice. So that is the first sacrifice. That, that Those are the, the, the sacrifices that God expects from us. And those are the type of uh, sacrifice that empower our personal altar. And our personal altar is the altar that help us with our walk with God. It's the altar that help us to secure our salvation. Because it's the altar that help us to follow Jesus. Because he said, if anyone wants to come to me, he must first deny himself. So he must, he must stop living for himself and start living for me. He must stop doing what he wants, but start doing what I want. He must deny himself, deny everything he has the right to. He must deny it for me. That is the call of God. To present ourselves, to present our body as a living sacrifice. So you must know that you are an altar. And you must constantly supply your altar with sacrifice. And sacrifice is living in obedience. Of the word of God. 
living in obedience of the word of God. That is the sacrifice. Everything that God asks you to do, you decide to do it. No matter what you're going through, even if you have to go through shame, even if you have to go through all type of, of, um, of humiliation, of scandal, just for you to remain obedient or faithful to God. You do it. That is the sacrifice that can empower your personal altar. And your personal altar is only for you. It will not help anybody beside you. Your personal altar will not help your wife. It will not help your children. It will not help your church. It will not help your siblings. It will only help you. That's why I call it the personal altar. It's only for you. It will help you with your walk with Christ and it will help you to secure your salvation. And that's it. But your personal altar is not also enough because you can have a powerful personal altar, but yet you are still poor. You can have a powerful personal altar, yet you are still sick. You can have a powerful personal altar, yet you are still single or you are still going from divorce to divorce. You can have a powerful personal altar, yet your life is limited, Block. You go from failure to failure. Why? Because your personal altar only helps you with your salvation and with your work with God. But it will not help you with other areas of your life. This is why beside your personal altars, you also need to raise altars for you. And this is what I call private altars. You must raise private altars for battles of your life. You must raise private altars to live in the victory of Jesus Christ. You must raise private altars to fulfill your destiny here on earth. Without private altar, you will only live your life, being saved, go to heaven, but you will not fulfill or accomplish the purpose of your life here on earth. And let me give you a good example. The Bible talks about the story of the rich man and, and another man called uh, Lazarus. And the Bible says that the rich man was living in abundance. And there was a man called Lazarus who would come at the table of the rich of the of the rich man of the rich man to eat, to eat the leftover. And the Bible says that 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 uh, poor man Lazarus, all his life, is he was just you know eating the leftover of the rich man. And the Bible says, when Lazarus died, he went with, with God. He went in the bosom of Abraham. He was saved. But here on earth, he was what? He was a beggar. He was a beggar on earth, but he was saved. So what saved him was his personal altar. But because beside his personal altar, he did not have any private altar. This is why he was only able to sustain his salvation, to keep his walk with Christ, to only live in fear and holiness. But he was still poor. He was still sick. He was still miserable. And I cannot, and, and I don't think, I don't believe that that poor man, has fulfilled his destiny on earth because he died begging for the leftover of someone. So if you only take care of your personal altar and you don't raise also private altars to fight in other areas of your life, let me tell you something. Your salvation will be guaranteed. But you will be miserable here on earth. And this is what the church is. It's just full of believers who fear God, but who are miserable. Believers who fear God, but they are poor. Believers who fear God, they are sick. Believers who fear God, but they are demon-possessed. They are not possessed in the spirit 
or in their heart because they are born again of the spirit, but they are possessed in the body. They are possessed in the soul. Why? Because they are failed to understand or they are ignorant of the fact that if they don't raise private altar, they will not be able to secure the destiny, to fulfill the calling, to fulfill God's purpose for their life here on earth. And like I said, you need an altar to fight the evil altars that are fighting you. You need to raise altars to fight the evil altars of your family. You need to raise altars to fight the evil altars of your workplace, the evil altars of your city, of your country. Because there are many types of evil altars. And if you don't raise evil altars for yourself, you will not make it. You might make it to heaven, but you will not fulfill the purpose of your life here on earth. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that when God gave the promise to Abraham, what did Abraham do? He built an altar right there. Why did he build the altar? He built the altar to secure the promise of God over his life. And you can see his child, Isaac, they were altars builders. Jacob, same thing. Moses, David, even King Saul, they were all altar builders. Why? Because they have understood that without raising private altars, it will be impossible for them to secure God's promise over their life. Many of you, God has promised you many things. Until today, you have seen none come to pass. Many of you, men of God, have prophesied about you, but nothing has come to pass. And today, you think that those men of God were fake men of God or were just, or were not, were not true, but they were true. Men of God, those prophecies were true. Those God's promises were true. But it did not, they did not happen in your life because you did not raise altars to fight those evil altars that are making sure that God's promises will not come to pass into your life. You can see in the book, you can see in the Bible when, when, when Anna went to dedicate Samuel to the temple. The Bible says that she went there with a sacrifice and she built an altar and she dedicated Samuel that for the rest of his life, as long as he lives, he will remain in the service of the Lord in the temple. And all his life, Samuel remained in the, in the temple serving God. Not because he wanted to do it. Not because he loved to do it. Not because he was excited about it. Not because he could, he, um, um, it was the best thing that could interest him. But because his mother consecrated him over an altar and sacrificed something for his destiny to be programmed in the things of God. But many of you, how many of you have raised an altar to program your destiny? How many of you have raised an altar to fight whatever is fighting you? How many of you have raised an altar to defeat the powers of your father and mother's house. Those powers of your father and mother's house, the reason why they are still capable to fight you, the reason why they are still capable to come in the dream, to rape you, to persecute you, to afflict you with sickness, with all kinds of bad luck, is because they are using altars. They are sponsored by evil altars. They are backed up by evil altars. Those evil altars supply demonic satanic powers to those to 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 those spirit that come and afflict your life but because you have failed to understand that you need to raise private altars to defeat them you go from pastor to pastor you go from prophet to prophet you go from man of god to man of god you go from apostle to apostle you pray you fast nothing happened why because the the, the issue of altars is not just something that you need to go 
somewhere so that someone can lay their hand on you or on your head and everything is over. No! Without an altar, you cannot overthrow another altar. Without an altar, you cannot sustain the blessing of God over your life. Without an altar, you cannot sustain the victory of God in your life. Even when God said to Gideon through the angel that destroyed the altar of your father. But the God also said that after destroying that altar, make sure you build an altar for the Lord. Because if you don't do so, you will not be able to sustain, to maintain that victory. You will not be able to maintain your blessing. And many of the believers have been have started being blessed by God, but because they did not have any altar to sustain the blessing, they did not have any altar to secure the marriage, to secure the family, to secure the business, to secure the ministry. And because of that, they have today found themselves failing. They are miserable. They are sick. They are poor. They are divorcing. Why? Because they have no private altar that can fight those evil altars fighting their life. You need private altars. You need to raise private altars in your house. And you need to sacrifice on those private altars. You need to have a place in your house where you come <coughs> to exchange with God. Every satanist, every satanic agent has an altar at home. Muslims are doing well. Why? Why Muslims are prospering? Because they have altars at home. Chinese are prospering. Why? Because they have altars. You cannot enter a Chinese store without seeing an altar. You cannot enter an Indian store without seeing an altar. You cannot enter a Muslim store without seeing an altar. You cannot enter the business of a Muslim or, or an Indian, a Chinese or a, a satanic agent or a wizard, or an occultist, without seeing an altar there. Even when you enter the car, you will see an altar there. They have altars everywhere. But Christians, believers, are the only ones who don't have any altars. They say that the only altars they have is the altar of Jesus Christ. It's the cross of Jesus Christ. Since you have been believing that the only altars you need is the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. It's been 10 years, nothing has changed in your life. It's been 20 years, you are still miserable. You are still single. You are still going through divorce. You are still, you are still addicted. You are still poor. You are still sick. Why have you not been able to resolve that issue? You went from pastor to pastor. You went from deliverance meeting to deliverance meeting. You went from prayer house to prayer house. Why your life is not changing? It's time to start or to try something new. Why your life is not changing? Change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind and change your life. Change your thinking and change your life. Change your mindset and change your situation. Change your mindset and change your condition. Try something new. Try something new. Try something new. So you need to raise private altars for other areas of your life so that you can be victorious in those areas. You need to have a private altars to secure your family, to secure your career to secure your calling, to secure your ministry. And how do you activate that private altar that you have at home? Praise and worship. Dedicating that altar to God. And then you need sacrifice. And your sacrifice is not, your sacrifice is not tight. Tight is not your sacrifice. Don't con never consider tithe as your sacrifice. Tithe is already for God. First fruit is not your sacrifice. 
Don't use your first fruit as sacrifice. First fruit is first fruit. General offering is not your sacrifice. General offering is general offering. Your sacrifice, beloved, it's something beside your tithe, your general offering, and your first fruit that you decide to sacrifice for God. Your sacrifice is something that is hard for you to give up. It's something that is hard for you to do or to give up. If you have 50 million dollars and you come and give 1 million as a sacrifice, I cannot call that one million a sacrifice. Why? Because if you have 15 millions and you only give one million as a sacrifice, it's not a sacrifice. Why? Because someone who has 15 millions, it will not be hard for that person to give away one million. A sacrifice is something that it is hard for you to give. It's something that is hard for you to give up. It's something that belongs to you. Don't go and borrow to sacrifice. Like some people borrow money to go and sacrifice. No, when you borrow to go and sacrifice, the one who will benefit from that sacrifice is the person you borrow the money from. Because when you borrow money, the money does not belong to you. When someone buy a car in credit, the car has his name, but the car does, does not belong to that person. If he miss a payment, the people to whom the car belongs to will come and take back the car. So when you go borrow money to sacrifice, it's not, it's, it's easy. Because it's not something that you have gained. It's not something you have labored for. It's not something you have worked for. But you, when you are work for something, you are work very hard for something. And then you decide to give up that thing. That is what we call sacrifice. Sacrifice is something that when you give you, your heart, you, you, your heart is, is you feeling really, you feeling pain in your heart. Sacrifice is something that when you give up, you cry inside because of the value. It's something that has a value for you. This is how you activate your private altars. By sacrificing. And you can sacrifice by sowing in the church. By sowing in any any uh, any project or any program that has to do with the kingdom of God or so in the life of a man or a woman of God that is how you can activate your private altar that you are built at home and when you activate that private altar, you can now use that altar to fight the evil altars of your family. You can use that altar to fight those altars of divorce, those altars of marine kingdom, those altars of failure, those altars of, of lack of promotion, those altars of, of, of discouragement, those altars of deception, those altars of fornication, of sexual morality, of perversion, those altars of spirit, wife and husband, those altars of, of poverty, of sickness. You can now use your private altar to fight those altars. That is the secret. But if you only pray and fast, pray and fast, pray and fast, but you don't sacrifice at all. No sacrifice. You just pray and fast. Nothing would happen in your life. Nothing would happen in your life. Let us read in the book of Philippians chapter 3. You will see what was the secret of Apostle Paul. Because we talk a lot about Apostle Paul. 
we, we think that it's just, it's just the grace of God, the grace of God. But let me tell you, the amount of sacrifice that man, Apostle Paul, did, that was the reason why God used him that way. Let us read in the book of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Let us read from verse 8 to verse 9. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 8 to verse 9. See what the Bible says about Apostle Paul. This is him talking. He said, verse 8, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Do you see the secret of Apostle Paul? This is what God did what he did with Apostle Paul. He sacrificed all things. He sacrificed all. His money, his time, his... He denied himself. He denied himself totally, fully, completely. And today you want God to use you as Apostle Paul. You want God to do in your life what he did with Apostle Paul. You think that is just by declaration. You will see God did do this in my life. Do what you did with Apostle Paul in my life in the name of Jesus. Do what you did with Apostle Paul in my life in the name of Jesus. It will never happen until you pay the same sacrifice. You want to do what Abraham has done? Pay the same price. You want to do what Moses has done? Pay the same price. You want to do what Jesus has done? Pay the same price. There's a price for everything here on earth. I know you are praying. You are fasting. It's good. I know you fear God. It's good. I know you walk in holiness. It's good. But that is only for your personal altars. If you need now to fight for all the... For all the areas of your life, like the financial area, the, the, your marriage, your family, you need private altars and you need to sacrifice. You need sacrifice to activate those private altars. And those sacrifices you sow in your church, you sow wherever the Holy Spirit will lead you to sow in. And this is not about tithe offerings or, or general offerings, tithe or first fruit, no. That is a sacrifice. So you take something that is very valuable. It might be a good. It might be material things. It might be a car. It might be a house. It might be a, a very big amount of money. But something that is very hard for you to give up on. Because Paul said, I for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Apostle Paul sacrificed for Christ. He sacrificed for Christ. He sacrificed for Christ. He sacrificed all things for Christ. But today, believers, they only pay the tithe, offerings, first fruit, sacrifice. They don't even know what it is. When you ask them, have you, have you, have you ever offered a sacrifice to the Lord? They will say, but yes, I tithe. I pay my first fruit. I give general offerings. Why? They are ignorant. No one has taught them. And now you wonder why your pastor is blessed and you are not blessed. You wonder why your pastor is rich, you are poor. 
And all you can say, go in the back and talk that our pastor is using the tithes, the first fruit, the offerings money to buy cars, to take care of his wife, of his family. But you don't know that that pastor is sacrificing to God. You don't know that that pastor has raised many altars to fight anything that could fight his prosperity, to fight anything that could fight his health, his marriage. Many of you, if you had built an altar, you will be married by today. If you had built a private altar, you will not be divorced. No matter what curse of divorce was in your family. Because any curse, any attack of the enemy, any oppression of the enemy, any affliction of the, of, of the enemy that has resisted your fasting and your prayers is automatically backing up or sponsored by an evil altar. And the reason why you are it, they were able to resist your prayer and fasting is because your prayer and fasting and fasting were not backed up by any private altar. The altar of Jesus Christ on the cross and the blood of Jesus, it will secure your, it will secure your salvation. You will be saved, but you will live your life here in sickness. Live your life here miserable. Live your, you will live your life envying people, losting at people things, losting at people's life. Why? Because you have failed to sacrifice the same way they have sacrificed to get what they have and what you are lusting at, what you are envying. So stop talking about people's prosperity. Stop talking about people, people uh, blessing when you have not paid the same price they have paid. When you have not sacrificed as much they have sacrificed. And when you see also a servant of God, a woman or a man of God who is poor, miserable, sick, is because of two things. Either he is ignorant of the fact that he needs private altars or it's simply because he refused to build private altars, just relying on the altars of Jesus Christ, which is the cross and the blood of Jesus. Apostle Paul was preaching after the death of Jesus. He was preaching after the death of Jesus, but he said that he sacrificed all things in his life. Why Apostle Paul didn't say that he will only rely on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to make it? To accomplish his destiny. But you. Who are more spiritual. The apostle Paul. You believe. That you only need the cross and the blood of Jesus. This is why. That spirit husband and spirit wife. Keep coming to flock you at night. Every day. This is why that sickness go and come. Goes and come. Goes and come. Goes and come. Goes and come. This is why after fast, fasting for 40 days, you fall. The, after fasting for 40 days, you fall into the same sin. Because you don't understand that that sin you are falling in every time. It's backed up by an evil altar. And you need to raise an altar to fight that sin. Unless you destroy the altar that is backing up that sin, that sin will always rule over you keep declaring the word of god that says sin shall not rule over me because we are not under the law but we are under the grace keep declaring that every day since you have been declaring that every day why are you still falling into that same sin why deliverance is not just a matter of declaration or prayer or fasting no when you are dealing with altars, you must raise altars to deal with those altars. So children of God, listen to me. If you are tired of your situation, it's the time for you to start building or raising altars, private altars, to fight 
because the things you have been fighting are keep still resisting you because, not because they are more powerful than the Holy Spirit or more powerful than Jesus or more powerful than the blood of Jesus, but it's because you have no private altar to fight them, to back up your prayer and your fasting. And this is why you are so miserable. The altar of Jesus Christ will give you, will secure your salvation. But if you don't fight that altar of sickness, of divorce, of celibacy, that altar of poverty, that altar of failure, that altar of limitation, your life will never move on. You will not go far. You will achieve little. So build private altar to secure your family. To secure whatever promise God has given you. All those prophecies that have never come to pass is because there's no altar. There's no altar that you are built to secure those prophecies. There are even prophecies for them to come to pass. You must build altars to activate them. But you don't do that. When we tell you about altars, the only thing that comes into your mind, we want money. The only thing that comes into your mind, we want goods. The only thing that comes into your mind, we want, we want your possession. If this is how you think, your life will never change. And you have been thinking that way for years. But let me tell you something. That is also the reason why for years you are still miserable. You are still poor. You are still sick. Your family is still miserable. Your children are still stubborn. Your children are still rebellious. Why? Because you have failed to raise altars to secure the promise over your life. And now, what should you do when your prophet altar... You have sacrificed, you have raised your private altars and your private altars is still not able to overcome those evil altars that are fighting your life. What should you do? At that moment, you must connect to a network of altars. You must connect to a network of altars. What does it mean to connect to a network of altars? It means that you must connect your private altar to the altar of someone who has an altar more powerful than yours. So if your private altar has not been able, because there are people who told me the other day that they have been sacrificing, they have been sacrificing, they have raised private altars, but things are not still moving on. I, I told them, you need a network of altars. Why? Let us, when we see in the Bible, the Bible says that, Jesus Christ, at a certain moment, because he was beat up, he was so tired to the point that he could not carry his own cross. And the Bible says that someone was sent, Simeon was sent by the God to help Jesus carry his cross. So it means that you will need, there are battles in your life, you cannot fight yourself. There are battles in your life that you need a Simeon to help you carry your cross. There are battles in your life where you need someone who has a stronger altar, a stronger private altar to back you up. There are battles in your life that you cannot defeat unless you connect to an altar that is stronger than the altar that is fighting you. So if you find yourself in a situation where your private altar is not able to overcome the attack over your life, connect your private altar to a more powerful altar. And once you connect your private altar to that powerful altar, that powerful altar will associate or unite with your altar. And both of them will fight the evil altar that are fighting you. And this is why... The men and the women of God who are doing well, who are prospering today, have understood. This is why you will see a great man of God going to submit to another man of God. 
This is why you will see a great woman of God going to submit to another woman or a man of God and sacrifice all the time there. Why? Because they have understood that as I go and I sacrifice and I sow into the life of someone who has an altar more powerful than my altar, then the altar of that person will associate with my private altar and will fight the altar that are fighting my life. This is why there are people who don't pray too much. They only do what? They only sow in the life of other great men of God that they know that those men of God have altars. And when they sow into their life, the altar, the private altar of those men of God will associate with the private altar and fight the evil altar that, were, that the private altar was not able to. To defeat before there are altars in your family that you cannot destroy yourself you cannot destroy yourself even me i am a man of god god is using me i see him doing mighty things but i myself connect my private altars to altars of all the men and women of God. When I see in the life of a man of God, a special grace that I don't have in my life, I connect to his altar. I go and I sow in his life. And as I sow in his life, I speak over my seed. I speak over my sacrifice. And as I speak over my sacrifice, when you receive that sacrifice, automatically in the spirit realm, his private altar associate with my private altar to fight whatever was fighting me so that that grace would not manifest in my life. Some men of God have not understood this principle. And this is why they are stuck in ministry. They are not going far in ministry. They are praying and fasting, going from prayer mountain to prayer mountain, prayer mountain to prayer mountain. Ministry is not prayer mountain. Ministry is principle. Ministry is not prayer mountain. Ministry is knowledge. Ministry is not prayer mountain. Ministry is wisdom. Ministry is not prayer mountain. Ministry is respect of spiritual laws. That is what ministry is. That is what ministry is. So there are things you have been fighting in your life. Raise a private altar and connect that private altar to a network of private altar. You can sow in the life of even 10, 15, 20 men of women of God that you know that they fear God. They walk in holiness, in sanctification. You know that God is using them. You must pray first before connecting to the altar of any men of women of God so that you will not connect to a, to a, to a bad altar. Or to an evil altar. Or to the altar of someone who's, who's not walking with God anymore. But when you pray, you say, God, direct me to someone where I can sow a sacrifice. So that his altar might unite with my altar to fight the battles of my life. Otherwise, you will be fasting, praying all your life. Let me tell you something. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. That is the secret. Network of altar. We have the altar of, the, the altar of, uh, of association, of cooperation. An altar where different people come to praise and worship. Like you see at the mosque, it's, an, it's, it, it's, it's a corporate altar. The church is a corporate altar. People come in the church to worship and to praise, to sacrifice on, on the same altar. So you can connect, you can, be from, you can be from church A and connect and connect after connecting to the altars of your church, to the altar of your pastor, but you still see that the condition is not changing. You can connect to the altar of another man of God or another woman of God. That will 
unite with your altar, with the altar of your church, with the altar of your pastor to fight the things that are fighting you. Because some of you, the altars that are fighting you are so strong, are very powerful, and you cannot overthrow them by your own. On your own, you cannot overthrow them by your own prayers, by your own fasting. Some of you, you need more than the altar of your pastor. You need more than the altar to connect to, 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 to another altar beside the altar of your church, of your pastor. I'm not telling you to have many spiritual fathers. No, you can have one spiritual father, but you can connect to the altar of anyone that you know that God is using them mightily. If you see that you have a problem in your marriage and you see a, a godly couple, a godly couple and God and the Holy Spirit can witness in your heart that that godly couple have the grace of marriage. You can sow into the life. As you sow into the life, that grace will also be your portion. And the altars, the private altars that was protecting or securing the marriage will also come and secure and protect your marriage. You see that you are poor. Go and sow somewhere. Go and sow in the life of, of, of a man of God or a woman of God who is blessed financially. As you do so, you will see the altar will come and fight, will associate with your altar to fight the altar of poverty. If you are sick, connect to the minister to the altar of a man of God who is powerful, powerfully used in the healing ministry. As you connect to him, what is going to happen? With that, that you don't even need to meet that man of God. You don't need to communicate with that man of God. If you can communicate with that man of God, it's good. But if you cannot, don't worry. Just so, just sacrifice. And as you sacrifice, make sure you speak on the, on the, on the sea. You speak whatever you want that sea, that sacrifice to do. Make sure that you speak that as he received that sacrifice. Let his altar unite with my altar to fight the evil altars that are fighting my life. As you do so, when that man or woman of God will receive your sacrifice, it will directly link the altars to your altar. And both altars will fight together against the altars that are fighting your life. That is the secret of prosperity. That is the secret to succeed in ministry, to have a victorious life in Christ. You must be an altar builder. And you must sacrifice to maintain your altar. You must do the maintenance of your altars. And how do you do the maintenance of your altar? Is by sacrificing. So you, some of you, you can you, you can advance at work. Why? Because those people who are competing you at work, they have altars at home. If they don't have altars at home, they are consulting with satanic agents. They are consulting with wish doctors. But you, you don't have any altar. When those people consult with which doctor, which doctor will raise altars for them? But you, you don't have anyone raising altars for you. But you think you will, you, you will succeed. You see, Christians, they want to win elections. But when the opponent go and do ritual sacrifice, they even sacrifice human beings. You, a believer, you just come with the blood of Jesus and the cross of Jesus, and you think you will win the election. When, they went, when your opponents went to sacrifice human beings, you, you don't sacrifice anything. You don't sacrifice anything. You just go with the blood of Jesus and thinking that your tithe, your offerings, your first fruit will make you win the election. This is why Christians are losing elections. Why? They don't sacrifice enough. They don't sacrifice enough. We see in the Bible, when Moab went to war against the children of Israel, God released the prophecy that the children of Israel would win the war. But what happened? 
The Bible said the king of Moab sacrificed his son who was to, to replace him. Once he sacrificed his son, what happened? A demonic power was released. And the Bible says that all the children of Israel went back home. Why? Because of one sacrifice that has value. That sacrifice was able to stop the prophecy of God, to block the prophecy of God from coming to pass. And you're wondering why the prophecy of God has not come to pass in your life? What sacrifice have you done? The people who are blocking your, your prophecies, the people who are blocking your life, they sacrifice every day, but you, you don't sacrifice. You're just calling the blood of Jesus. Continue to call the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is patient. Even for 100 years, call the blood of Jesus. It will only secure your salvation. But you will remain poor. You will remain sick. You will remain miserable. Why? Because you need to sacrifice. Jesus said, I carry my cross. Carry, take up your own cross and follow me. 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 Take up your own sacrifice and follow me. As I sacrifice myself, sacrifice yourself. As I sacrifice my life, sacrifice your life. As I sacrifice everything I have, sacrifice everything you have if you want to fulfill your destiny here on earth. So when you, you, you see that your private altars cannot overcome the adversity in your life, it's time to connect your altars to a network of altars. And you can connect your altars to many other altars of men or women of God who you know that they fear God and they walk in holiness and sanctification. As you do so, whatever grace they have over their life shall be transferred into your life. This is not something that is, is not just because um, we men of God, we want your money or we want your goods. No, we, we don't need it. We, we don't really need it. Whether you provide for us or not, God will provide for us. When you are true men or women of God, you don't rely on the offering basket. You don't rely on the offering basket. I don't rely on the offering basket and I will never rely on the offering basket. Because I have made up my mind that as long as I will have, I will raise my altars and secure the promise of God in my life, I will never lack. I will never lack. Like the Bible says that the righteous will never lack. So I will never lack. I will never lack. So, but this is the secret for you who are watching me. You who are listening to me. This is the secret. You are tired of your life. As a believer, raise altars. And your altars is still weak. Connect your altars to other, peop to other people's altars. As you do so, I can guarantee you, you will contact me to share your testimony. Before the end of this year, you will call me. You will contact me to share the testimony. If you apply what I just told you today. You will give a testimony before January 1st, 2019. Because this is the solution you needed. This is what you needed to hear to change your life. And this message is not for everybody. It's for those that God know that they are willing to pay the price to see the condition and the life change, to see the breakthrough come to pass and you need to know there's a difference when you want to connect to someone private altar or to the altar of the ministry of someone if you want to connect to the or to the private altar of men of god a you must sow in the life of men of god a not in the ministry of men of god a if you sow in the ministry of men of God, A, you are connecting to the altar of his ministry. But if you want to connect to something that is specific to minister A, you must sow in the life of minister A. You need to know that difference. If you want a grace from a man or a woman of God, sow into the life. If you want the grace of the ministry, sow into the ministry. If you want the grace of a certain program, 
So there, if you see they are building a church and you want the grace or you want that, the, 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 that altar of that church that is being built to associate with your altar to fight, go and sow into that, sow into that project. But it's where you sow that you will reap. If you sow in the life of someone, you will reap there. If you sow in the altar of a ministry, you will reap there. If you sow into a, a, a Christian program, you will reap there. So wherever you sow, that is where you will reap from the altar. So this is how you connect. You connect your altar to other altars by sacrifice. When you offer sacrifice, this is how you would connect your private altars to any altars you want. It's the same thing in the kingdom of darkness. This is why satanic agents, they are doing sacrifice on a daily basis. Why? Because that is where they get the power. They don't pray to get power. They don't fast to get power. They sacrifice to get power. What are you sacrificing, children of God? So the Lord has spoken to you today. Father, I pray that all those who are hearing the sound of my voice, all those who are watching me right now, all over the world, I know you have spoken to them. But I pray, God, do not allow any power, do not allow the enemy to steal the truth you just gave them right now. Do not allow the enemy to come and make them doubt again. Do not allow the enemy to come and to trouble the mind. Do not allow the enemy to inject evil thought about these mysteries, these solutions for the fight of altars. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the blood of Jesus Christ, secure the instruction. Make them understand that it's only by obeying the instructions that they will see a result. Make them understand that you are not a God of works, but you are the God of sacrifice. That you are the God of principles. That you are the God of spiritual laws. That you are the God of the word. Touch them, O oh Lord. Tell them what to do. Guide them. Direct them. In the name of Jesus. May 2019 be a year for them where they will triumph over any evil altars that was fighting the life and the family. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Go in peace. And tomorrow, we're going to pray to destroy those evil altars. So we have learned about the importance of altars. We have learned about the evidences that can show us that we are on the attack of evil altars. We have learned about the power of sacrifice yesterday. And today we we'll learn how to build altars for God. Tomorrow, we're going to pray to destroy those altars. So tomorrow, we are going to apply everything we learn since day one so that we may deal once for all with those altars in our life. Now you know the secret. Since the first day, since day one of this program of deliverance of evil altars, I told you that altars are not just destroyed by prayers and fasting alone. Today, I gave you the solution. This is the solution. As you do what 
the Holy Spirit told you through my mouth today. Tomorrow, we will start praying to destroy those evil altars. And I can guarantee you, you will testify before January 2019. Before January 1st, 2019, you will testify. Because there's nothing as obedience that can move God from his throne to come down on earth to intervene. Remain blessed.